tonight's Inspiration webinar. Inspiration Software is the embroidery software line of G7 Solutions and Designs and Machine Embroidery. Our Inspiration Software line includes My Block Pacer, My Quilt Embellisher, Perfect Embroidery Pro, and Perfect Stitch Viewer. Tonight's webinar features our Perfect Embroidery Pro. Changes are good. We have a wonderful team assisting us tonight. It's Dory from the Technical Support Team, Nancy R., Chris L., and I would like to present you to our longtime family member, Catherine Artinas. Catherine is an author of patterns and books featured in Designs and Machine Embroidery magazine and is addicted to playing with her Perfect Embroidery Pro, much to our pleasure. Take it away, Catherine. Thank you, Dory. And yes, I am addicted. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'd like to begin this evening just with a little review of the very first screen that comes up when you open up Perfect Embroidery Pro. This is your My Inspiration Today window. And um, as a reminder, you have lots of choices right here to go get inspiration, whether it be Eileen's blog, the free monthly projects, lots of good things in there for you to go to. Also, very important button right here, the click here for software support. This is where you would go to either get uh, technical help from the help desk, um, again, technical aspect of your software, and also to access the forum, which is an excellent source for all of your how-to questions. It really is worth a visit. Then the other thing to remind you is right in this window here, uh, you simply click in that area to go get your free monthly designs if you've not yet picked those up for April. They're very fun. And then if you have um, not picked up any of the free designs from previous months, there is now this easy button right here, this previous month. So a lot of good stuff on this opening screen. And important for us as well is the choice of creating a new design or to open an existing design. For us this evening, we're going to create a new design. Tonight's webinar is on beginning manipulation. We have a webinar in July that is an on artwork, creating from an image. So tonight we'll be concentrating on the features that let us make changes to existing designs. We'll talk about the shape tool and fill types in your properties, creating outlines, making sure you're comfortable with the sequence view as well. We'll talk more about the terms vector and raster in depth in our artwork webinar, but what we need to know tonight is that design objects have vector edges, which simply means that they can be resized without loss of quality. Their edges, either curved or straight lines, are defined by points, and we're going to begin simply this evening. I'm in symbols. I'm going to take the apple, and as I you notice my mouse is in a crosshair mode, if I click and drag, I can see the shape and size of that apple, and I'll let go right there. I'll turn on my 3D so we can see the stitches and so forth, come up here and get my select tool. And when we talk about creating an outline, you may have done this before, but it is a very useful tool, so it's worth revisiting for you to have total understanding of that. You see that my apple is selected. If I do a right click on that selection, I'm going to come up here to create outline. Clicking on that once brings me into the box to do an outline. We notice the default is 0.08 distance away from my main object, and I will have one repeat. I'll go ahead and OK those defaults, and you can see what happens here is yes, indeed, I have an outline that is 0.08 uh, inches distance from my original. If I right-click again, go back into my Create Outline, let's bump up the repeats just for fun to see what that does for us. We'll get a couple going there, and you see that we have um, more repeats, four of those repeats, each one being the 0.08 distance away from the previous one. Now, if you take a look over here in your sequence view, you can see that at the moment, all of those outlines are still artwork, so we would need to convert those into stitches if we wanted them to stitch. This sort of looks like the echo mode that um, cultures do at certain times. 
All right, I'm going to select that and uh, right click and delete for the moment because our next use of create outline, we'll do a right click, come up to create outline. This time I want to make that distance zero and this is the trick that we're going to use frequently this evening. By making that distance zero, what you are asking the outline to do is to simply be right at the very edge of the shape of our apple. Um, it is selected here. If I get my hand and drag it over, you can see that it has created the outline of the entire shape. If I put it back to finish that idea, I would, showing you right now that it is still artwork, we would select it, right click, convert to, a run, and then you could make those choices whether you wanted the standard, the two-ply, the beam, whatever it is that you wanted your outline to be. Certainly we could change that color. I'll just drag that over there right now so that you can see we actually do have those stitches. Let's come back to our apple at the moment and we see right here that both of these areas are grayed out. That means this, that this particular design is grouped. We have two ways to get it ungrouped. If I right click, I can choose ungroup or I could have come up here to my ungroup on the toolbar. Now those areas are separate. And if I use my plus sign right here on my sequence, it will expand all of the segments that are available for that particular object. So you can see if I click on the minus, it collapses. If I click on the plus again, it expands to see those. What we're going to play with here for a moment is the part of the design um, that is the complex fill, not the run stitches that are the underlay, because we're talking about manipulation this evening, and with this manipulation, we can change the type of fill. If I want it to be a corn pattern and I apply that, we see the different direction of the fill. Very interesting. And if I'd like to do the same for the stem, I'm going to expand, clicking on that plus sign, come down and select the satin portion of the apple or the stem, and we'll come up instead of satin, we'll go ahead and make that a brick and apply. So very easy manipulation. This is truly very basic to um, change the types of patterns for your designs, but it's important for us because this is part of our manipulation. We now want to take a look at our uh, very important shape tool, which is this second button on the left toolbar. If I click on that and then I come down into my red area, I'll scroll down here and select the complex fill um, and my shape tool is on, you see that we have a number of blue squares, we have a green and a red dot, we have black circles connected by a yellow line, and each one of those things plays an important part in the shape and fill of this particular object. The green dot represents the starting position of the fill, of the shape. The red dot represents the ending position of the fill or the shape. And then the yellow line with the black circles is actually the angle line, which is controlling the uh, direction of the fill stitch itself. The blue uh, squares that we see tonight are called nodes, or they're called anchor points, or they're called simply points. It depends on who's talking to you and what their favorite word is to use, but any of those words will identify these blue squares. Um, the path of the shape, which is the shape of this apple at the moment, the path of the shape passes through these points. They appear along the path everywhere where the path changes direction, and also at the beginning and the end of the path. They can be manipulated to change the shape of the path, and when we click on one, we will see control handles. I'm going to click on that, and if I drag that point out just a little bit, you see that it has a handle here. I'll drag it back, because what I'd really like to do is, do you see this flat area right here on our apple? If I were to right-click on that path, and I ask for it to add a point, I then can drag that point out just a little bit, come over here and click on Apply, and then that shape fills in to where I have manipulated that point. I'm going to 
uh, change the shape here a little bit as well and maybe pick this one up as well and apply. And then that apple has a nice round area to it. We're going to talk about the points um, for just a little bit. Again, we'll go into more detail in the July webinar, but here's a brief explanation of the types of points that we have available to us. First of all, I'm going to right click and use the edit and ask it to just show me not all of the types of things, but just the outlines themselves. That way I don't have to pay attention to the stop and start and the angle, and I can work just with my points. If I click on this point and drag it out a little bit, and I'm doing that on purpose so you can see these control handles. Uh, when it's close next to the red, you can't see them as well. But if I um, play with these handles, you can see that I can drag this particular handle, I can drag this particular handle, and both of those are different on either side. That's because this particular point is a cusp. When it is a cusp point, that's exactly what I can do. I can pull those handles in different ways, and you see what it's doing to the actual shape of that design. If I were to click on Apply, that stitching is going to fill in those shapes that I have um, created. <clears throat> Let me right click again, ask it to edit my outlines, and then we'll play with this one. If I click on that, right click, and I make it smooth, it's going to give me those control handles that um, are different length on either side of the node. I can size them, and you see what it does to the side of the circle. I can drag that in if I size it and so forth. I have control of both sides of that curve. If I right click that and make it a line, the difference here is with a line there is no handle. Um, the path is treated as a straight line going into the point and coming out. So we might have an angle or we might have a straighter line, but what we won't have is a curve. There is no curve or control handles with a line. Lastly, we have a symmetrical. And if we make our point symmetrical, it means that these size handles, these controlling handles, you can see when I drag one, the other one is um, increasing or decreasing in the same amount on both sides of that point. So with symmetrical, it will still act like that teeter-totter, but the curve running through that point is similar on both sides. So here we have the four different types of points, and we'll be playing with them throughout the evening. The other thing I want to talk a little bit about is to make sure that you are comfortable with the difference between a file open and a file merge. First, let's do a file open. We are brought into the Perfect Embroidery Pro free designs that you all have. Um, it's in your path under Dime. And if I want to play first with this cowboy hat, I'm going to double click on that. And it brings it into a clean screen. Turn on my 3D so you can see that better. But it brings us into a clean screen. There's our design one where we played with our apple. But now we are in a clear clean screen. And we are actually, because we did a file open, this is the original design. I know that because the file name, which happens to be a number, is right here on the tab. It's also, if you look way up here at the top of your screen, you have the same file name. That 7393 is the file name. Now, when you do a file open, if we were to do manipulation to this design and we do a save, we are overriding our manipulation over the existing or original design. So you always want to be aware of that. Make sure that that is indeed what you want to do. But since we are playing this evening and just seeing the kinds of things that we can do to designs, I don't want to override any original design. So instead of doing uh, a file open and being in the original design itself, what I'm going to do instead is click on a new design screen, so I'm in a third one, we can tell right down here at the bottom, a third tab, and this time I'm going to do a file merge. And when you do a 
file merge will open up the same design. We are in a clean screen that does not have a name yet. We can tell because it's simply called Design 2. Anything I would do to this design and do a save, I am not going to override. In fact, it's going to force me to do a save as, so I give this design a brand new name. I don't run the risk of overriding the original. And to make sure that I don't do that, I'm going to click back on the tab, this being our original design, and I'm going to close that. So we have no chance of overriding. Okay, now we have a design merged onto a clean screen. Let's play with it for a little bit. Um, let's see some of, we're going to do some very easy manipulation with this first one and remove some of the pieces and parts of the design. We want to end with just the hat. So we want to remove the ropes and the gloves themselves. I'm going to come over here in the sequence view and work with the color segments in this design. Um, as I click on the first one, I see that it has selected the rope. It is yellow. It's the first color. And one of the options I could do would be a right click and delete, which the inside of the rope has is uh, gone at the moment. I'll go ahead and collapse this and choose this gold color as well. And you can see that not only is it the color of the outline of the rope, it's also going to be the color of the gloves. Whereas I did a right click to delete it, this time I'm going to use the delete key on my keyboard. So you won't really see me do that, but you'll see the result of it. I just deleted it. I'll refer to that as a keyboard delete in the future. Having deleted that portion, I'm left with the outline of my gloves. I see that color over here in the sequence view. Once again, I'll do a keyboard delete, and that is gone. So what we have done is remove all the parts that we did not want. We're left with the hat, which is what we wanted to begin with. And I'll go ahead and collapse that. We only have the two colors. Um, remaining. And the other thing to think about when you are playing with designs is sometimes you end up with lots of different thread colors down here on your thread chart. And just as a reminder, you can come over here to the lower right hand area of the thread chart and click on the minus sign which says remove the extra threads. So here we're left with just the two colors of our hat. We want to take this a step further and make this more of a girly hat. So I'll come down here and click on the number one color. I'm going to pick a pink, say OK to that. And because the hat, that first, the hat itself was assigned to color number one, whatever I make color number one, it has changed the hat color. I don't like the red with it, so we'll go ahead and click on that. And I'll come in and probably pick a soft white or ivory, OK that. And now we have our hat. So just the two colors are involved. When we deleted the rope and the gloves, we also deleted the outline around the hat. We know now how very easy it is to add an outline, so I'm going to come over here to the sequence view, select my hat, right click it, create an outline. You know that trick is to put a zero in for distance. I'll say OK there. It is a pink, so you don't see it very well. Um, for display purposes, I'm going to add one more color. The teal comes in. The outline is still selected. I'll go ahead this time and right-click on the teal to apply it to my selected area. But uh, to refresh here, remember that this is still artwork. So selecting that outline artwork, right-click, convert to, run, and um, perhaps I want a two-ply to go around my hat, and maybe I wanted a 2.5 since the hat is relatively small. And I apply that, and I now have my cowgirl hat in a pink. We've deleted the extra accessories, <coughs> excuse me, and are left with just a real girly hat. Um, at this point, to finish our manipulation, I would do a file save as, and I would need to name this. Um, I'll go ahead and call it cowgirl and save that to, oops, <laughs> left over from my playing earlier. And um, we now have a new design from an existing design in your embroidery designs.
We'll do another one, and this time we're going to combine two designs. So once again, I'll come up with a clean screen, going into File, Merge. I am looking for my seagull. He should be just two clicks away from, for, uh, from my mouse here, and I'll double click on to bring him onto the screen. And I see that I have a seagull with my son. I'm pretty sure I want to get rid of the sun, so I'll come over here to the sequence view, click on the yellow, do a keyboard delete, and the sun is gone. I will select my bird by clicking and dragging around all of the parts. I'll do a right click and I choose to group that bird because I'm going to play with him here in just a moment. I'll size him down just a bit, move him out of the way, go back under File, Merge, and we'll go get the island. And the island is uh, about seven or eight clicks away. So we'll come down here. And let's see, there she is right in the middle. We'll do a double click and our Island is going that way. I'm going to move that down a bit. Um, zoom, do a double click and zoom out on my screen so I can see all of my objects. And at this point, I'm going to select my bird again and place him where I think he would be most effective. And also, just for fun, we'll do a right click copy, right click paste. He is resting on the other, we'll make him smaller. And by making him smaller, we give a little bit of per, uh, perspective to our island picture here. Um, and there we have another very easy manipulation, taking pieces and parts from some designs and adding them to create a different scene. If we look at this in our 3D, and we decide that maybe the wind, instead of coming from the west, is coming from the east. Another way that I can go up and choose everything in my design, I can scroll all the way top at the top of sequence and do all items. Everything is selected. Come up here to a flip horizontal, and the entire scene flips. So in this case, the wind is coming from the east. At this point, if you're happy with your design, you could do your file Save As, give it a new name, and you've created yet another brand new design. We'll try one that's a little bit um, more sophisticated here. The same kind of thing, though, where we are combining. Once again, I'll do a File, Merge. And you can see that I keep going into our free designs. You have lots of different options here. Um, our blue boat bird is going to be relatively in the middle. Here it is right here. And as we bring this to the screen, it is a lovely design as it is. It really is quite pretty. We'll go ahead and do an ungroup. Oops, I didn't need to do that. I want to scroll down in my colors because what I'd like to do at this moment is to remove the blue bird. And the trick then is to find the pieces of the bird by clicking on the very last item. We can see that that is also part of the outline of the bird. And I could continue to click up on these areas until I'm sure that all those pieces are part of the bird. If I were to go up one more, I see that now I'm picking parts of the cherry branch, which I do not want. So if I click, <coughs> on the very first item in my bird, I'm going to hold down my shift key on the keyboard and then click the last one. That's a trick for you to select multiple pieces that are adjacent to each other. Um, it's the control you might be used to in selecting multiples, but with your shift key, if they all touch one another, it's a very fast way to get the group. I'm going to right click and cut the bird. I don't want to delete it. I just took a moment to get all the pieces and parts of that bird. And I think the bird is very lovely. So I'm going to click on a new screen, right click and paste the bird. I have selected it and taken it out of its original design. But if right now I do a file save as and I give it its own name, if I call it a blue bird and save that, I have just made another design that I can use in the future. We'll return back to our cherry blossom, and we see that once we took out the bird, we have a hole 
in our stitching, which is indication of good digitizing because whoever did that removed the overlap stitches, which is a, a good thing to do. But at this point, we want to fill up that hole with something pretty. Once again, we'll do a file merge. We'll go back into our free designs, and the one I want happens to be down very close to the bird. That was our original design, and I like this butterfly right here. So a double click will bring that into my screen. It is all selected. I'm going to right click and group it because I am going to play with it. I'll size it down just a little by dragging a black handle and then drag and drop that in that area that had no stitching. And if I like that, I could save it as is or I could do a flip uh, whoops, I didn't want to rotate. I want to do a flip. Do a flip horizontally and then maybe manually rotate it and position it in such a way that it is resting over that area where the bird was. So once again, I've taken uh, parts of two different designs and taken out the part I don't want, put in a new part, and created a brand new design on its own. We'll do one more. Um, we'll once again get a clean screen, file, merge, and this time I'm looking for the bumblebee. So we'll go down five clicks to find him. And uh, here he is. Double click brings him on our screen. And as we look at him in 3D, he's a very formidable bumblebee, very serious looking design. We'd like to lighten up this design a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the shadow. I'll do a keyboard delete and uh, collapse that part of the bee. And at this point, I don't want to do anything differently with the body, but I am interested in playing with the wings. What if we made those more of a translucent wing? Um, a little bit more airy. And to do that, we're going to come over to our sequence and click on the area that represents the wings. If I expand it, I see that I have runs and two satins. The satins are the actual wings themselves. So if I select the first satin, come up here to my fill type, instead of standard, I think I'm going to go with contour and I'll apply that, and you can see that we have a little nicer look. It's sort of where I'm headed with this translucent idea of mine. So we'll click on the other satin, do the same thing to it, ask it to be contour, and apply. And I want to zoom in just a little bit so you can see our situation. With the wings, the contour did give me a look, but we now see those run stitches that are behind those um, contour stitches. So what I'd like to do, I'm going to click on the runs. This time I am holding my control key down while I select those runs because those runs are not um, all touching each other. They're not adjacent. So to select the multiples, I use control. And I'm actually going to delete them. I'll do a keyboard delete and I'm left with my two satin wings. And this is the look that I was after, this idea of having a very lightweight area to the back of my wing. But you might notice that this left wing looks less dense than the right one. Even though we checked the density is at uh, one for each one of them, it is the same density, it looks a little different here because of the shape of this wing. So what we're going to do is just play to see what might be a better look for this wing. I'll just up that density just a little bit. And just as a refresher, the higher the number in your density, the farther apart your threads. And here's a little window that shows you that, um, that if we went higher, these spaces would be greater. I'll apply that. And now both wings look very similar to each other. And wouldn't that be a, a neat look if we used metallic thread for those wings. It would very much give us that look of opaque or translucent, um, which is what we were after in the beginning. All right, let's pause there for a moment. Those were our easy manipulations, and we'll stop. Uh, Dory, by chance, do we have any questions that have come in? Yes, the first question we have is, do you need more density when you apply different fills? 
And I'm sorry, I missed part of your question. Uh, do we need more density when? When you apply different fills. What was? Um, we can, if you are unsure, for example, uh, when we just played with our B, of course we were doing the opposite. We were taking out some of our underlay uh, run stitch because of the look that we were after. But if um, in this particular case, when we brought this one in, you may, whoop, took the wrong one. You may remember that our butterfly is hiding some of that area, so uh, we would not have to deal with that question for this suggestion. But in our first one, when we did our apple, and we change the fill. If you are not sure, now this particular um, uh, apple has a little bit of run stitch under it, and if you wanted to make sure, if you needed to check to see what the fill, the uh, run stitch or the underlay would be on a particular design, remember you can always go back to your slow redraw and we can take our stitches through and we see there's just a little bit in there under that apple, we probably would want to add more to that. So what we could do, remember you always have your option to go under click to stitch and under that we have our ability to say what type of fabric it is on if we were putting it on um, a terry cloth and the design itself is closed. Oops, well it's going to indicate that it's open probably because of this outline over here here. But where I'm going is this next screen right here. That if you are unsure of the amount of your underlay, you could always come in here and ask it to uh, apply new underlay settings for you. Um, and if we did not want the density and did not want the pull compensation, we could just ask for the new underlay, underlay settings to be applied at this point. The other option that you would have is if I selected that entire apple I could go under the um, underlay screen and I could add in my own at that point, whether I chose to put in the perpendicular or the contour, whatever it is that you can do and you can apply that. So it will put some more under there. It's always a good idea to check that. Um, as we play tonight, I might not always return to that uh, idea, but it was a great question and um, keep that in mind as we are playing. Never, never hurts to add, go through either one of those, click to stitch or to add your own. Okay, um, is there anything else that has come up at this point? Yeah, one more. Thank you. Now we're going to go to the opposite right. side with the hole in the branch. Let's go back to the branch. Yes. All right. How does yes. one connect the brown satin or fill stitch to eliminate that hole by making the branch complete? Okay. And if that is a fabulous question, and if I can ask the um, person who asked that question to hold on for just a little bit, we're actually going to do that in some of our more advanced manipulation. Um, at this point, I sort of gotten everything out of whack here by moving that outline, but there is a way that we can go into that, and if I've not answered that question in full detail by the end of our webinar, um, please ask that per person to raise your hand again, and I'll, I'll actually come back to this branch. I've kind of messed it up. I might uh, bring in a new one if they want to see it on this one, but we are going to address that. It's a great question. Okay. Thank you so much. That's good. Okie doke. We'll, we'll go ahead and move on. It's not always a good answer to anyone to say, ooh, hold that thought, but I will ask you to do that because we do address it. Um, we have a clean screen up on our design page, and at this point we're going to bring in another design with our same pattern of doing a file merge. This particular design is all the way towards the bottom of our list of free designs, and it's this golf course right over here. Uh, turn on 3D so that you can see it. Um, and I've brought this one up specifically so we can spend a few moments in the sequence view. This sequence view is a very powerful tool that you all have for manipulation and I want to make sure that everybody is comfortable with the pieces and parts that we have control over. If we have this full golf scene 
and all we want to do is end up with the flag and the, the um, putting green and the hole itself. We just want to end up with this area. We have lots of um, other part of the design that we need to delete. And some of this is behind the flag, so it uh, presents a little bit of a challenge on how we might get rid of those colors without deleting the green of the putting area. The first thing I would do would be to click and drag a big rectangular square around a portion of the design to see what is captured in that select, and then I would just do a keyboard delete. That got rid of a good portion of the design itself. I'm still left with what I want, but I also have this fairway and the sand trap that's behind my flag. So we're going to come over and use the sequence view to help us with uh, taking out some of the parts we don't want. First of all, you can see that some of the areas have been expanded. We talked about expand uh, and collapse. If this is a minus sign, it is giving me the option to collapse that segment. Here I have another minus sign to collapse that segment. Or I could do a right click anywhere in the sequence view, come up and ask it to collapse all. So it brings it back and all I see are the colors of the individual um, segments of this design. Before I do the next thing, I'd like to draw your attention to these eyes. You see that they are dark right here. And if I were to click on an eye, I'm asking the software to hide that particular color. And you can see that it hid all of the green. It hid some of the green that I want. So that's not really what I uh, want to do at the moment. So if you want to bring it back, you simply click on the eye to bring it back so you can see it. So this is useful in doing it one by one. Or once again, I can right click, come up, and ask it to hide all. Now that might give just a moment's hesitation or anxiety as to where did our design go, but we know it's still there because we can see all of these colors over here in sequence view. I have all of the eyes darkened. They are all hidden. And now I can bring back the colors one by one. And in doing so, I'm, I see that that's my light green. I'm also going to click on the second eye to bring back my dark green as well, the shading, but look what I've just allowed myself. If I click off the selection, I can now click and drag around the fairway portion, not my putting green portion, do a keyboard delete, and that portion is gone. If I hide those colors again, and then I come down, and I bring the sand trap area, the lighter brown and darker brown. I see it's all selected. I can do a keyboard delete for each of those. Actually, let me hit the heading there. And those are gone. Now I want to do a right click and ask it to show all. And all that's left, I've deleted everything except what we've wanted by using these tools that are offered to me in the sequence view. The last thing I would probably do would be to click on all items, come up to my ruler, do a right click, and ask it to center the uh, portion of the design. I'll back off a little bit in the zoom so you can see it better. And we are left with just the flag and the putting green that we were looking for in the beginning. Once again, we would finish this with a file save as, give it a new name, and there we've created, once again, another design from an existing design. We're going to uh, bump it up just a notch here and go to do some intermediate manipulations. And this would include us doing uh, removing just parts of an object. Um, so we'll do a clean screen. And this design happens to be in your text designs. So I'll click on that. And I happen to know the number of the design that I'm after. It's 98. 007. I can type that number down here in my find window, click on my down arrow for it to find it for me. I see it highlighted, double click it to bring it on the screen. I'm going to 
just uh, size it up just a little bit right there. Turn on the 3D so you can see what we have. And if I want to take out the little happy faces out of the flower and also remove this secondary flower, the smaller one, so that we're just left with one flower and it looks uh, a little bit more nature-like instead of a happy little faces. To do that, I'm going to start at the bottom and I click on that. You see all the items in blue. We know that it is grouped. I'll right click and ask it to ungroup. Click once again on the bottom. I see that dark color is my faces, but if this was a situation where you couldn't tell what that was, maybe these pictures are too small and you don't know what you have chosen, you can always get your hand in there and drag out the portion that you have seen away from the stitches so you can see it better. If it is the one you want, we could delete it, but if you found that you had selected the wrong area, simply do an undo and it'll put it right back where it belongs. Now we happen to know that that is part of what I want deleted, so with it selected I'll do a keyboard delete. I also look in my sequence view and I see two portions of the flower. I have the outline right there. I'll hold down my control key and choose the gray portion of the flowers also. Do a keyboard delete and I'm left with just the one flower. But I have a leftover stem right here. So we need to take care of that. That's a little different. It's actually a part of the um, leaves and so forth. A little different than that golf uh, fairway that we took care of in the last example. So at this point, I know that the are, these are my green colors. I'm going to actually click on the portion of the design that I want gone. At the moment, I see a very large rectangle. If I'm not sure what I've selected, I take a look and see over here that run is is in the gray, so that's the item that I have selected, but it is the outline of all of the leaves. At the moment, I'm going to go ahead and do a keyboard delete and get rid of that. And I'm still left with the stem, so I'll come over here and select it again. I just clicked anywhere in the stem. That looks very much like what I want gone, so I do a keyboard delete. I have a little bit more left, so I can do that again and click on I actually can drag around that head and delete that. And you see by being persistent in that stem, I can click and delete all the pieces and parts until I am left with only the, um, let me bring that up, I'm going to show you something here. I'm left with just the one stem for this flower and the two leaves that I want. However, having done that, I also removed the outline stitch. You may remember that we've played with this before. I'll go ahead and um, collapse that. I'm going to select all of the green, do a right click. We're going to create another outline. And doing that hint, that trick that we know to make it a zero distance, we OK it. It's coming in in blue. Uh, might be a little difficult for you to see, but I'm going to go ahead and change it to this dark gray color so it stands out a little bit more. It is artwork at the moment, and I have some other artwork I'd like to add just very quick, quickly to put these leaves back similar to what they were. I'll come up here, and on my artwork tool, I click the arrow, and I'm choosing the pin, and I'm going to right-click on my gray so that I am in that same color. And all I'm doing here is moving my mouse and clicking uh, a couple clicks in there. A right-click will end it. I just put in a stem, and I'll do another on the other side. Three or four clicks, whatever you'd like to do, and a right-click ends it. Then I'm going to come to the bottom of my screen, just to remind you, to show you that all the three parts of the gray that we just put in are still artwork, we'll select all of the area, right click, convert to run, and I'm going to change that to 2.5 and go ahead and apply. And there is my outline stitch back on my flower. Now, take a look what we've done right up here. Do you see our situation that we have created? by putting the outline in last. I will right click 
and collapse all so that you can see, right here is my black outline, and it is the last thing that stitches. We need that black outline to go under the flower, just as the green one does. So if we click on that and drag it up and drop it on our green leaves, you can see that we've taken care of that situation by making it stitch second, we'll stitch over it. One last thing we might want to do to uh, make this design ours, I'm going to right click on the yellow color, choose the last outline, and right click on the orange, and I've made that a bolder flower, and once again, we went from um, two flat with faces manipulated the design by removing pieces and parts that we don't want. The next sample that I have for you, I already have um, started with the designs. I have a folder already created so I could access this easily. But these two designs um, are here on the screen. I've done a file merge to bring them both up. You may remember from last month's webinar, if I have things up on the screen that, that I didn't go get, so you can see where I got them, I will put a note over here for you. So as you play back the webinar, there's your reference right there. They're both from the free designs. The balloons has a number, the baby buggy has a number, so you could recreate it for yourself. I'd like to remove the word congrats scroll down here in my sequence view until I find it by color. It is selected. I do a keyboard delete. I'm left with these two ribbons that were uh, behind the congrats. I know I don't want this little one, so I'll select it and keyboard delete. And then I'll select this one and drop it over here for the time being. I might need to manipulate that just a little bit later. But now I will drag a square around these balloons to select all of them and drag them over and drop them right on the handle of our baby buggy. Uh, a zoom will allow us to see the entire screen. We'll turn on the 3D so you can see what we're going to do next. At this point, it's a very fun design just as it is. And we could leave it and give it its own name or you can put your own touch on this design. Let's play with the fills in the balloons. So if I look down here in my sequence view, scroll down until I see the yellow balloon, I, um, if I select that, you see that I do have a fill type, but I have none of the numeric values here. And that's because I need to expand this particular color and click on the satin portion of the design, and now I see all the specifics. So you might need to do that in the future if you ever click on it, uh, a full heading and you're not seeing the numbers that you need to see. In this case, we're going to change the yellow to a pattern number one. We'll bring that down in size just a little bit, 2.5 for our stitch length, then apply it. We have a little different look to that balloon. I will collapse that one go looking for my blue balloon, which is right here, click on the satin, I will do my pattern, and for the blue one, we're going to choose a brick, leave the defaults, and apply it. We have a little different look over there. Con I'll collapse my pink balloon, expand my red balloon, click on the satin, and I'll change that one to the corn fill and apply that as well. So we've given a little different look to the balloons. I think they're a little bit more interesting if they're all different. And now we'd like to take a, a look at the baby buggy. You may remember this one from last month. I liked playing with that as well when, with our templates. But we will uh, collapse the balloon and we will go looking for the body of our baby buggy. And in this case, we see it right here. I've selected both areas, and I'm going to expand. Scroll down a little bit so I can see the satin of the hood of the buggy and the satin of the bottom. If I hold down my Control key and select both of those at the same time, I can go in and change the pattern to both of them and change it to corn. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see what we're going to play with next because uh, once again it does look fun that way but we'll, we're going to play again 
with our shape tool. I just have the bottom of the buggy selected. I'm going over here to our shape tool. I click on that. We see all of the points and the stop and starts and the angles. I don't want to change the shape of the buggy. I think it's very nice as it is, but I want to play around with the angle of the stitch. So I'm going to right click, choose edit, and ask to play with only the angle lines. Having done that, I see one right here. I'm going to drag that circle to about that position. Click on this black circle, drag the other one to that position, do an apply, and I get a very interesting look with that corn. I'm going to do the same thing with the hood of the buggy, and once again, the shape tool, right click on one of the points, ask to edit just the angle lines. I see one up here and one down here. So I'll click on this one and drag it down a bit, drop it in that position, and maybe click on this and cross them just a little bit. You're allowed to do that. Go ahead and apply, and I get a really interesting look up here as well. In playing with this, you certainly could continue to play with the angle lines as you wish, but in doing this, I've decided that this is very fun. You can really play here to make it look like it's a vintage rattan baby buggy, um, and I think that's a little bit more interesting than the original part of it. So we've not harmed anything, we've played with what is there, we've taken two separate designs and created our own design. Certainly you could add the baby's name uh, around the balloon or uh, dragging down here in some fashion, and it would be darling um, for the new baby arrival. Very fun. We'll pause a minute here. And Dory, do we have any other questions at this point? Uh, believe it or not, you've got everybody just sitting there. <laughs> okay, good, good, because I'm going to move on then to the advanced. And this is where I'd like to answer that question um, that the person in the audience brought up earlier about how do we fill in holes. At this point, I'm going to um, open another design that I have created for us, and she is just a, a cute little girl with sunglasses. Once again, if you look over here in the notes, you can see where I got her. And we'll turn on the 3D. We like to remove her sunglasses and just have it be a little girl that probably lives with me in Erie, Pennsylvania, where we don't see the sun very often. But as we scroll down, I see that um, the hot pink is definitely one of the colors of the sunglasses, so I'll do keyboard delete for that. But if I now take a look at the pink, I can see by selecting that not only do I have the sunglasses, but I also have her pink cheeks. So when you are doing manipulation, you need to be aware of the pieces and parts of the design that might be under the same color. We can isolate her cheeks. I'm going to come down here and start at the bottom, and you can see that as I select over here, it's showing me on the screen the portion of the design. I'm going to keep going up until I have decided which pieces are her cheeks. At this run right here, you see I go into the glasses, so I'm going to go to the one below it and use my Shift key again to select all of those adjacent um, segments. And I'm not going to delete her cheeks, but I am going to apply the darker pink that I just took out of the sunglasses. So I'll come down here to number 16, do a right click, and I have isolated her cheeks from the sunglasses. So now I can come and uh, do a keyboard delete to the light pink and a keyboard delete to the blue, and I'm left with our young lady with no sunglasses, but she's got holes in her hair. To answer that question now, we're going to come in and zoom up into the area that we need to fix. And I might even come up um, a little closer here. I think I'll go back out one. And I'm going to choose my shape tool and come down here because we need to fix these two holes. If I click once on the outline stitches, oops, let me start that again here. And you see that I have this area selected. It's showing me all the starts and stops and angle lines. I only want to play with the outlines here, so I'll do a right click 
edit just the outlines and I actually can click on that point and drag it up and drop it. We do want to overlap it just a little bit. I'm going to come back here, click on that, drag it up and drop it right in that area. That's very straight for her head, so I'm going to right click, ask it to add a point, and drag that point out just a hair to give it a little bit of a curve. And now if I come over here to apply, it filled in that outline stitch, but you see that we still have a hole. I still have my shape tool selected, so if I click on the light brown portion of that, here is my shapes. I'm going to click on that point and drag that point down deeper into the hole. Here's a point right here. Shape over there, so I'm filling up my hole. If I do an apply, it has filled in that area nicely. Remember now, we have this zoomed up to over a thousand, so what might look like spaces, once we come back to a normal uh, zoom of the screen, we're not going to see that. We have it zoomed up quite a lot. This point, we're going to use our pan tool. If you've not used that, this is pretty cool. We click on it, and I simply am doing a drag and I can move the screen around and drag to my next position that I have a little bit of a hole going. Click on my shape tool again, click on the outline area of this design, and sometimes you just have to um, play around to, oop, that's not the one I want. And how do you know the which point to select? Tool. There we go, and I'm going to right click, use an edit outlines, click and drag, drop that up in the area, click this point, drag it over, lap a little bit, and again apply. And I know that I have one more area that's over here, oops, so I'll get my pan, to, not my zoom, my pan tool, I'm way too high. We'll do to fit, and then I'll zoom in again, that was way too much um, exaggeration for our zoom. So I'll get my shape tool, come back over here, and select this area, right click, edit, outlines only, and I can drag that outline area, picking those two spots, and apply. And again, we have a little bit of a hole in here, so I want to select this area, take that point, drag it up under, apply it, and I've taken care of those holes. If I zoom out, our little lady looks perfect with no sunglasses and no holes in her hair as well. So that would be the same thing had I not messed up that branch. We could have gone back and um, zoomed in and selected just the brown portion of our design in this area and asked for just the, uh, to edit just the outlines and then I could do the same kind of thing. I might decide to bring both of them to meet in the center. Uh, I can also do a select of multiple points. I can see right now that this might be a little different than the other. But the thought being that you can play with this. Uh, honestly, as we've played with these designs tonight and do manipulation on a number of them, there'll be some times where the design you have chosen might not be the best design to manipulate. Sometimes the fixing of the design might be uh, more time consuming than it would be worth for you, depending on what, where you're going to um, embroider this design, how if it's something for a child that's going to be on a bib, might not warrant a lot of time on your part. So you do have to bring some logic to your design manipulation and um, some designs simply are not easily done as manipulation either. Um, so we, ha we do have to think about that kind of thing. All right, we are very close to the end. I just want to bring up one other thing to leave you with here, a little challenge that you might want to do. We have, um, I've given you, I'll leave the screen up as we say goodnight, but you can see that the where these designs come from. This is a little smiley Raggedy Ann girl, and if you minus or take away her face, you're left with hair and a pretty little bow. Then if you go get your little monkey, uh, a boy monkey, you can apply the part that you have saved 
to an existing design and you come up with a little girl monkey. So um, I do challenge you to take a, a different look at all the designs that you have involved with your Perfect Embroidery Pro. There's a lot of fun stuff in there to play with. All right, before we uh, say good night, are there any other questions at, at, uh, yes, at the end, Yes, I do have one. How do you get rid of the line that was added when you moved the second outline area? On which design? Which one we were talking about? It would have been... When the little girl... The, I'm sorry? It would the have, girl with the glasses? Yes. When you were doing okay, her what, hair, what? when you were doing her hair, how do you get rid of the line that was added when she, when you moved the second outline area? All right. So if you have an outline area, okay, you, how do you get rid uh, of the second outline area? The second, I, I'm sorry, I'm not understanding the question. Um, was it? Are Are you asking me again? How did I bring up just the the points that I wanted to move? Yes, yes. Is that what you're asking? That me? is exactly. Okay. Once again, all right, let me zoom in a little bit and we'll get to a small area like that and we'll start for, uh, whoops, gosh, did it again here. We will uh, back out and zoom in just a little bit. Okay, get my select tool. And if I'm starting at this point and I, I needed to get this area right in here, I went get my select, uh, I selected my shape tool and came over and really it's just a matter of deciding which portion of the design I need and then I just took my uh, mouse indicator which is the shape tool at this point and I clicked on what I thought was the outline. Now, when I came over here in the brown, if I had accidentally clicked on this purple color, I always do a quick visual check over here too with sequins and I can tell if I'm even in the right color area and I know that I'm not because that's dark. So sometimes I just have to play around until I see the shape of the area that I'm trying to fix. So it's really a matter of just clicking on. Now you when I click the stitches that are behind that outline, whereas if I click on the outermost point of that outline, I now get the shape of the um, outline. So you can tell, sometimes you just have to click multiple times until you see that you have what you want. Otherwise, you could go back over to your sequence view and simply run down the list of areas that you have uh, for your run stitch in a particular color. And then just to finish that thought, if I click there, remember I would right click, ask it to edit just the outlines, and then I am playing with just these points that are part of the area that I'm playing with. Okay? Excellent. Thank you so much, Kathy. the question? Okay. I, I thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you, everyone. A uh, couple thoughts at the end here. Remember, change is good. Basic manipulation is fun. Um, so go ahead and extend your stash all you want. Thank you for joining me this evening, and I hope to see you again in May for the True Type tutorial. Good night, everyone. Good night, and thank you again, Catherine.